Jackson Radio Show. What's up, everybody? Kevin Jackson here. It's a Kevin Jackson Show. Ah, theme today is sanity. Sanity, sanity, sanity. I don't know. Look, I've never used drugs. And you could say at times I've lost my mind a time or two. You know, like you just get a little frazzled over some things, maybe trauma in your life. But never where I would call myself insane. I've 99.9999% of the time lived a very sane life. No right from wrong. You know, I always had my wits about me. And I've never thought to myself, man, I should experiment with insanity for just a little bit and see what it's like. No, I've seen it. I've seen people crazy. I've seen crazy folks. I mean, who I could tell you some stories. So I don't need to experience. It's kind of like somebody says to me, hey, have you ever run into a wall? No, but I see somebody doing it and I don't, it doesn't make me want to do it. You know, you haven't experienced life until you've, you know, skydived off a mountain without a parachute. Yeah, well, so you say, because <laughs> I'm not doing it. I want to go into underestimating Donald Trump. See, I've seen what happens when people underestimate an opponent. When you spend as much time as I have, learn, and I'm, I'm putting it in a fight game. People love that talk so much. <laughs> a couple of people, they hate when I talk about this. It's part of my life. What do you want me to talk about? Anyway, I spent time training as a warrior, youngster. Time I was eight years old, learning how to fight. And it was just the way it was. You grow up on the streets, that's the way it is. Got to be tough. And if you underestimate somebody, don't be surprised when it's game over and you're looking at the inside of your eyelids in a supine position. That means you got knocked the flunk out. OK, never forget, I was a play, I was a baseball. I was a uh, little league baseball player and I was a tough kid, probably about 12, 13 years old. I'm guessing. I, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Something like that. And uh, this little chubby kid, he was friends to one of my best friends. I mean, he was a cousin to one of my best friends. Some Mexican kid who was a big kid picked on this little white boy. And he just was the, like the little white boys like, just leave me alone, leave me alone like this. And. You know, I don't I don't understand what the beef is with this little chubby Mexican dude. But he, he was like, no, man, he's pushing. He's bullying this kid, bullying this kid. And I, I wasn't going to let him like fight the kid unless the kid wanted to fight. I was, you know, it was one of those deals where I was just staying out of it. But watching the situation and this little kid's probably 10, 11 years. old. I don't know. May, I may have been a little older, to be honest with you. But long story short, the little kid finally says, I don't have a problem fighting him. He goes, I just don't want everybody jumping on me. I just want, you know, I'll fight him. And so I said to the kid, I was like, you know, he's got some guts. And this other little Mexican kid was from a family of of supposed fighters, uh, the Galindos. So this little Mex, this little white boy says, as long as nobody else is going to get involved, I don't care. I'll fight him. And I was like, wow, this little chubby, little fat, because he was a chubby kid too. And didn't look like he could fight his way out of a paper sack. And so, Little Mexican kids all cocky like, oh, do it, let's do it, let's do it. So a little white kid stands off, and I mean, he goes into one of those old-style boxing things where the one fist is way out <laughs> and the other fist is close to his face. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know those old school with the guy's got his chin up? He might as well be smoking a pipe. <laughs> and so the Mexican kid gets set up like he's going to fight, and I'm not exaggerating this one bit. Little kid just... That fist that was way out there, he just popped it out there and, and hit that kid in the chin, and it surprised him. And then this little kid, once he got that punch in, pop, 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 pop. I mean, he wailed on this dude. He wailed on him. I stood back and went, whoa. That fight was over in 10 seconds. And that little kid just, you know, got his gear or whatever, and he walked back. The only thing he was afraid of is other people jumping in. And I told him, I said, look, I, I'm not encouraging you guys to fight. I don't know what this is about, but nobody else is going to jump on you. That I'll guarantee you. And he goes, enough said. And he whooped that dude's butt, but good. He was easily 30 pounds lighter, four inches short, shorter, and he didn't give a crap. And I'm telling you, that little Mexican kid was in shock. 
It's 15 seconds, 10, 15 seconds that fight lasted. I mean, this dude, look here, from that one boop, old school punch to the burr, just rat, I mean, it was rat to tat tat on his knotted head is what it was. And, I, and after that, I was like, wow. You don't underestimate an opponent. I had a similar thing, except mine was we weren't trying to fight. Guy just would watch me train, and he was in. He was like, like, what is that? Never seen martial arts. He'd been in the pen, been in the penitentiary. But he was a boxer, short little dude. I mean, little arms like alligators. But, boy, I'm going to tell you what. If we had been fighting, he would have whooped my head because I'd underestimated him. I was 19 years old, fresh, you know, uh, got my regular one of my black belts. And this guy would have whooped my head. And I learned then and there, my lesson was as ingrained in me at that point than I could ever imagine. I can't even tell you that. Anyway, Democrats have learned that very same cruel lesson dealing with Donald Trump. You never underestimate your opponent. And as for Trump, he's a trained warrior. Probably hadn't fought a day in his life, physically. Mentally, this guy has fought thousands I'm talking tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of times he's been to battle and see Donald Trump would never underestimate his opponent he would never underestimate the cunning nature of a Democrat and in fact here's something you guys probably forget Donald Trump acknowledged this in a debate with Hillary Clinton you remember They said, okay, guys, name one thing you admire about one another. And I don't remember what Hillary said. That's how insignificant it was. But I remember what Trump said. He says, I admire her fight. He extolled her virtues uh, on her ability to hang in there and to fight. He knew she was crooked. He knew she had cheated Bernie Sanders. He knew she was a vile, despicable human being. But he still said, I see the warrior in her. A lot of other people, they would have been gone. They didn't, you know, they wouldn't have lasted. I admire her fight. Crooked and ruthless, but nonetheless worthy as an opponent. He didn't make a value judgment on her. Everybody that's against you is a piece of crap opponent. At least if you're going to be in a fight or a war. So why would you, you know, be mad that they want to come after you? No warrior's mad at a a guy that wants to fight. When you get in the ring, I'm not mad. You know what I get mad about? That I trained for this moment. You're mad because, I mean, and you can't be mad about it because it's what you chose to do. But imagine, you know, you're on the street or you're in a, a battle for your political life and you have to fight people that you know are crooked. They're coming after you. But you know why? You get mad because you had to train. You knew this moment would come. That's what makes you mad as a warrior. Anyway, Trump recognized that. He admired that in Hillary Clinton, despite who she was. But here's the other thing Trump knows. He knows his own skill set. He knows what he brings to the party. Hundreds of thousands, like I said, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of negotiations of sharpening that steel, of beating that steel down to make it harder and harder and better and better. No cracks, no flaking, no nothing until he's ready. I mean, he's going to heat that thing up and re-beat it over and over and over. And he'll beat it for years. And then finally, it's time for the quench. And that steel is hardened. And it can be sharpened down to the point where it will cut practically anything. Trump knows his skill set and he also knows when the other people are lacking, he knows his opponents. Look at how Trump, for example, used the media. It was bad media. It was bad press. He knew it. But what happened? His message leached through. It leaked through. It made it through. It was supposed to be impervious to their, all their nonsense. We heard recently 90% of the news that they put on the other channels outside of Fox is against Donald Trump. And yet, he still manipulates the media. He still beats them at their own game. Little mini wars inside of other wars. And he dominates them. 
there would be hardly any news on the other side of the aisle if it weren't for Donald Trump making it. Chuck Todd had uh, Mul- not Mulvaney, uh, he, uh, maybe it was Mulvaney, and he's doing an interview, and Mulvaney's like, I-, I have nothing to do with Russia, and Todd's like, yeah, but you're the only person we can talk to. Please tell us something. Please, please, please. He's begging. Please give me something on Russia. I, what can you, I don't talk to the president about that. I'll talk about the State of the Union. That's how bad it is for the lamestream media, the fake news media. Without Trump, without access to his people who are on lockdown, they got nothing. And here's Fox and Sean Hannity just going to town, man. Crushing it. All because the left underestimate Donald Trump. The left have found their sanity, folks. Not their insanity. They're always insane. We're making them sane. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.